Today we are talking budget-friendly ways to make your home feel more whimsy goth or witch core or witch cottage. There are so many different names. I really, I don't know what to call it at this point. I'm just going to list all of them, but I guess we'll just say to make your home feel more witchy, a Victorian witch cottage. In order to come up with these DIYs, I imagined myself designing a witch's cottage in the woods. So when I'm listing everything, just kind of keep that in the back of your head so it makes more sense as to why I did certain things and why I chose certain things. But that being said, let's get started with the first one. The first DIY is a medieval type castle window. This will only cost you your time and cost you a couple bucks for some tape. And this by far was my favorite DIY just because of how affordable it is and how unique it is. I think for this sort of project, I would use electrical tape just because it comes in black and you can remove it easily from a window, but I'm sure there are other tapes as well that you could use. You would just cut the tape down to the size you would want and you would put it up symmetrically in a design and voila, you're done. Which is cottage window. There is only one person I found that has actually done this DIY and this is YouTuber at Dad Crafted. I will link his video below where he does it and he used pinstriping tape. The next DIY would be to add floating candles to your home. Now, this is something that we see in certain movies, but nonetheless, it does add that whimsical magic element to a space that a witch's cottage might bring as well. I have done this DIY myself. It's super easy and attainable. I would recommend these lights right here, and these are LED candle tapers. They come with a remote control, so as soon as they're up, you don't have to touch them anymore. They come with multiple light modes, and they also come with flicker and just a stay on normal light as well, which is really neat. My candles that I bought were, I think, $20, $20 if I'm not mistaken. Maybe they were less. You only have to replace the batteries. That's really the only time you'll have to go up there and unscrew the bottom. But other than that, once they're up, they're up, and they are there for you to display and light up every single night, which is really cool. The other item I had to buy for my candles was fish wire, and I used alien tape on the ceiling. So in total, it ended up costing me about probably around $28 to do the project. And when it comes to where to display them, I think over a dining room table could be really neat depending on how you have that set up over a fireplace mantle over your tv area just kind of wherever your centerpiece is in a room would be a good place to start the next one would be to make a diy broom this is so much easier than you might think i swear so I made one that I ended up gifting to my friend. Here's the photo of it, it's so freaking beautiful. I'm happy I gifted it to her though because she has it displayed in a way I've always wanted mine displayed and I just never did it, which is why I gave it to her. But I do plan on making one again in the future and this is how I made mine. So I had a dead tree in my front yard that ended up having to get removed. So before we removed it, I ended up pulling off the most perfect branch. I hand sanded it down, I stained it. And then for the bristles, I actually went to Hobby Lobby where they have this huge selection of many different dried flowers. And I chose the one that fit the broom I wanted best. I got copper wire, I tied it around the bristles at the end, super tight. And then I put some copper foil around that wire to hide the wire pretty much. And I just, I glued it down. Now, because I don't have a video showing you how I made my broom, I did find a DIY tutorial by at Cactus Lady Creation. I will link her video below in the description box for you to check out. The next DIY is to make an apothecary station. Now this consists of doing many different things that I consider all individual DIYs because there's so much that goes into making the apothecary station. So the first one is to make DIY apothecary bottles, potion bottles. You can do this using pill bottles and Mod Podge and newspaper and paint. You can actually apply pretty much anything to your bottles using Mod Podge, depending on the texture you want. And if you don't want to buy Mod Podge, you can make it yourself using Elmer's glue and water. It's definitely more of a time-consuming project. The bottles will look extremely aged 
just because of the way they have to be created. So if you're looking for something that could come off of a movie set, I'd say that this is probably that vibe, but it's a really cool way to create potion bottles without having to go out and try to thrift glass ones. I'm also going to link below how to do the DIY potion bottle. That way you know how to do it on your own since I am not showing you how to do it here. The next DIY is to age glass bottles. So if you just want them to display or if you want to make an apothecary station, you might want them aged just because it makes them look older than what they are. All you would have to do is go out and thrift glass bottles like this. And this one's a little dirty, so it does actually look aged because I had water in it for quite some time. So there are many options when it comes to making a bottle aged. You can get frosted glass spray paint, which gives it that frosted appearance. You can't see anything on the inside, but it does look aged. Or you can use acrylic paint and a sponge, which is a very easy way. You can use different colors of paint depending on what you're going for and just let it dry and you're done. But if you have those bottles laying around and you feel like that's not enough and you want to do more, of course you can go and get some miscellaneous labels for these items to write whatever you would want to be in them. And you can buy these labels either on Amazon or you could even DIY them yourself. I would recommend buying them though because there are so many different options online and they look really, really cool. I just feel like it's something that would take you a long time to do on your own, but that alone would definitely take your apothecary station to the next level. And with that, we have DIY storage containers. So depending on if you have enough items to put in these, maybe you don't need them, maybe you do. For these specifically, I was thinking of cotton swabs, I was thinking of Q-tips that you could put in these containers that would go in the bathroom, and then maybe putting one in there next to it that has something like dried herbs or something that wouldn't fit in a bathroom but would fit in a witch's home. The reason why I wanted to put this DIY on the list though is because I get these containers from the 99 cent store or Dollar General. You can find them at any store like that. They also carry them at Michael's and Hobby Lobby and other craft stores. I don't know the price, but they're definitely going to be more. And they come with a black lid. I spray painted mine, but the DIY in this is that you can get these little trinkets. The trinkets you decide to get totally up to you, but you can glue them on the top and then spray paint it or keep it all black. And it just looks like a vintage type storage container that you would find in a witch's home. And I got this idea because there was something I wanted from a website and it looked just like this, except it had an owl on top and it had a gold lid. And I thought I could easily just make that myself. You can also repurpose any sort of glass food storage container. That is what's being done in this DIY video I found. And they screwed holes in the tops of their lids and added some vintage knobs to decorate their storage containers. So many different options and they all look so cool. The next idea is to customize your spice cabinet and maybe have somewhere to display them after the fact. This is something I've always wanted to do. I just don't have enough spices in my home at the time, but you can easily go out and buy a bunch of different bottles along with labels for your spices and you just go home and you put your spices in them and you display them and they look so aesthetic. To me, it's something that I feel fits the theme really well, just having those types of items on display. But if you don't wanna go out and buy bottles, there are kits on Etsy, Amazon, many other websites that you can buy and they send everything to you and you just do it at home. You don't have to go out and buy just the singular bottles and stuff like that. I think probably getting them in the pack that allows you to do everything at home yourself is the most affordable way to do it. Yeah, I just think it's a really fun, easy DIY and it's usable, which is great. The next DIY is to make an insect display case or an insect shadow box. This does require you to get insects though and like put the needles around them to hold them up. Uh, so if you're not a fan of like touching dead bugs, maybe this wouldn't be for you, but it is a DIY that's feasible. All you would have to do is get the shadow box. I see shadow boxes at craft stores all the time. They normally range from $10, depending on the size, up to like $35. Could be a unique collection for you to start and add to your home. 
Another really easy DIY is just to dry out your flowers, dry out your herbs and hang them up from hemp string. That could also be usable or you could just use it as decor. Obviously, some of the flowers you buy aren't gonna be edible, but if you were drying something like rosemary, of course you can end up adding that to your customized spice cabinet. But this sort of thing, any sort of dried herb just hanging fits with the witchy home theme very well and it just looks cool. The next DIY project is a candle centerpiece. I imagined getting something like a silver tray, like this one for instance that I thrifted, and it is tarnished but it fits the theme really well because it is aged and I could put a bunch of candles in here along with some little tiny bottles or you could also get a lantern that has a big empty space on the inside of it and display candles there. And you would just do this by getting an array of items and putting them all together to kind of make this eclectic candle centerpiece that would be on your dining room table or on an island or somewhere in your house. <laughs> yeah. The last DIY would be to create a collage on your wall or a portrait wall, but it wouldn't it wouldn't just consist of portraits, it would consist of many different things. So for instance, it would consist of your shadow box full of insects. It could consist of bones that you've collected over the years. It could consist of your dried flowers. It could consist of portraits. Every little witchy thing that you can think of just kind of put in a section of your room as a accent wall. I think that would be so cute and especially if you had one of those secretary desks and you had candles and you had that over top of it. It's also just a really cool way to display all of your items but keep them together as an ode to an aesthetic or a vibe that you're going for. So that is it for all of my witchy Victorian DIYs. Hopefully me throwing the word Victorian in there doesn't freak you guys out or make anyone mad because I guess I could just say witchy, but I don't know, saying Victorian just sounds more appropriate. Yeah, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. And if you have any other DIYs that you would like to share with me and everyone here watching, feel free to do so below. And if there are any videos of people doing these DIYs or talking about them in more detail, I will be sure to link to all of them in my description box. And I guess that's it. I will see you guys in the next one.